as we've uh, seen in the uh, full rendered version, there's a lot of kind of detail that goes into uh, the design. Okay, so switches, small holes that exist in different locations. Okay, some different symmetry. Okay, so what we're going to do with our continued model is we're going to go ahead and start adding in some of that additional detail because hopefully one of the things that you're getting out of this is every one of those small little details ends up making a pretty big impact to the uh, the model that you've got. Okay? Um, as we can already see, when we look at the home view of kind of the finished model with the, the rough shape and sizes, you know, those holes start adding a lot more detail compared to kind of the bland shape that we've got right now. So to go ahead and take care of this, um, I think most of our information is down on our bottom view. Plus, that's also where we have one of our flat surfaces. Okay? One of the things that you may remember is um, trying to get um, adding new parts to a round object can be a little bit of a challenge. So what we're going to do is we'll start a sketch um, kind of on the, uh, the front line, okay? the, uh, the flat surface that we've got. And uh, we're going to go ahead and take care of the two different kind of buttons that go onto those portions. Okay? So we'll start one off, um, it's kind of centered. Okay. Then that's actually a pretty big one, so we'll point 0.375. Okay. We'll do another circle, okay. a little more inwards. We'll do 0.25. Okay. Actually, let's do 0.2. Okay. I think a lot of what we're going to do is going to be on 0.2 geometries. And um, in this case, okay, we're able to go ahead and um, notice that they're still moving some. Okay? Uh, we haven't really done anything to go ahead and lock that geometry in place. Okay? So as before, we can go ahead and use a point to go ahead and set up some geometry. And then of course, we can use the horizontal lines to say that it needs to be horizontal with those points. We can then set in dimensions, um, or actually, let's go ahead and project. Okay. Sorry, now that I've got the, uh, the lines out there, select the two lines, okay. and of course we need to have a small little construction line to go ahead and help us out. Okay. So from here, we can go ahead and say that, grab the symmetry tool again. Okay. That go ahead and locks that circle in. Okay. We can then use dimension to go ahead and kind of do the same thing on this side. Okay. Uh, let's go with 0.35. And then for the moment, we can go ahead and finish up those sketches. Okay. And as we can see, it's going to make a little bit more sense to be able to view down here. So right click, set current as home, okay. and then I can use extrusion. Okay. Now here, we've got one that needs to go outwards, one that needs to go up onto the object directly above it. Okay. So in this case, we're going to tell it to go up. But we're going to tell it rather than cut, we're going to join. Okay. And I think uh, from what I did, okay, I think that dimension is going to work just fine. Okay. Now for the other one, okay, re-enable the sketch, select the part we want to extrude, and we'll have that go out kind of a equal distance, okay, 0.1. Okay. So when we look at it, Okay, we can see that. Now if we decide maybe that's not quite enough, okay, we can go back to that earlier extrusion, okay, tell it that we need it to go instead of one side, both sides, okay, and we can tell it that for the other opposite side, okay, we're actually going up to the object, okay, and then for the other distance, we're going out Point one, sorry, 
negative 0.1. Actually, I think 0 0.05 is going to be better. Okay, so that goes ahead and kind of cleans that up. Okay, giving a little bit more depth and dimension in that regard. Okay, from here, okay, probably the next part that we need to take care of is where we're actually going to be engraving a little bit, a uh, circle in this location. So same concept, drawing a sketch on the flat side because we already have a flat surface that we can work with. Okay. Telling the circle to go ahead and create a point two. Okay. And then we can use some of what we've already done. Okay. We can tell it that it needs to be horizontal to existing geometry. Okay. And then a dimension of how far we want it from which location. Okay. So I think this one okay, is actually going to be up there. We can dimension it from a side as we choose. Okay. I think that point two is roughly going to work. Okay. From here, okay. I think this is where we'll go back to the sketchbook. So on the bottom side, okay, we're currently dealing with that hole. Okay. There's going to be one left and right of it, but it's not a full 180 degrees all the way around. Okay. We're going to use the circular tool in two ways. Okay. So first off, we will take care of the engraving first okay so when we look at this okay that hole is already kind of up there okay so what we're going to do is we're going to select that okay we're going to tell it to extrude our starting place though is rather than the plane that it's drawn on we're going to tell it to start from the object okay and then we're going to go down okay a distance of negative negative point one. Okay. Actually I think that's a little too much. It's uh point zero five zero four actually. Okay. So that goes ahead and kind of engraves it a little bit. Okay. But that's also created a new feature. Okay. Extrusion number ten. From here, what we can do is we can tell it to create a circular pattern okay, of that feature, okay, but rather than, and then we're still going to rotate it around the same part, okay, but rather than do a full rotation, we can say that we want symmetry, three in total, okay, but then as we adjust the angle, they go ahead and tighten up on each other. So I think 90 is maybe not quite enough. Um, okay, 105. Okay, and what happens is it goes ahead and puts in those three holes. Okay. Now before I put the one that is the perfect mirror, okay, this is where you start kind of recognizing where else do you have parts that are going to get that same 180 degree mirror command. Okay. So in this case, okay. Let's get back to kind of a more normal view. Okay. From my front side, okay, I've got another flat surface that I can work with. Okay. And I can go ahead and draw another 0.5 circle, or sorry, 0.2 circle. Okay. Set up the dimensions so the horizontal um, lines that it's following okay, are in place. And then we can set our dimension. So escape dimension. Okay. Let's try 0.45. Okay. And then we'll finish that sketch. Okay. We will do kind of the same command for the extrusion. So we'll select that shape, extrude, starting from the object. And then going in a distance of negative point 
zero four. And when we look at that, okay, we get pretty much the same effect. Okay. So from here, okay, we can now go ahead and select the two features. So that was uh, select uh, both of those features. And then we can go ahead and create another pattern, okay, circular, set the axes to the object. Okay. And then we only need two of them. And we can see, okay, one gets created on the top, and one gets created on the opposite side. We've done a lot there to go ahead and kind of add in, I guess, vent holes or some of those little details in that model. Okay? Now, in the same vein, okay, on the bottom, we need to have kind of uh, two switches, okay, where the grip might be. So in this case, new sketch. Drawing a rectangle, okay. I'm actually going to project this uh, to go ahead and make it a little easier to go ahead and take care of the geometry. Okay. Okay. Um, so, again, playing around with sizes, uh, let's call that 0 0.25, maybe 0 0.625, okay. and then in terms of kind of finishing it up, okay, we're going to go ahead and create a couple of slots. Okay. So overall slot, okay, I think is going to be most efficient for this. Okay, so we get the center line. Okay. Okay, 0 0.04. And then create another one. Some of the same geometry. Okay. And then here again is playing around with some of the dimensions. Okay. So if we say that's 0.1, okay. we know that this may be 0.2. Match geometry. Okay, that way it's just going to go ahead and kind of keep things in similar lengths. Okay. Now, in this case, okay, we may just have to go ahead and kind of change some of our dimensions. Okay, that's one of those things that you can always kind of go back and add together. Okay, so we can actually say that it's going to be that dimension plus that dimension plus that plus that plus maybe another point one. Okay. So that goes ahead and kind of gives us the space that we need okay. when we apply the horizontal constraint to the points. Okay. We are able to go ahead and kind of lock them in place. Okay. Dimension-wise, we can go ahead and say, let's see, we already have the width set. Okay. Okay. We just need to go ahead and put in that symmetry. So in this case. select the two outer lines, select the center line. And then what we're left is another case where we've got the general shape sketched out, but we're going to have to use multiple extrusions to go ahead and kind of finish it up. Okay. Um, so actually I want to do a little bit of a fillet um, on the edges, just out of making it look a little bit better. Okay. I think that looks good. Okay. And then Finishing the sketch. Here's where we're going to go ahead and use multiple extrusions to go ahead and help us out. Okay. So, kind of looking from the side, okay, maybe kind of at a slight bit of an angle, okay, we're going to actually tell it that we don't want it on that flat surface. That's a little too high. Okay. We actually want to have it offset a little bit. Okay. So, we can offset the plane. Okay taking it down a little ways. So take that down 0 0.02. Make sure you're paying attention to the direction it goes. Okay. And then in terms of dense uh, distance, okay, tell it to go down to the object. Okay. So from here, okay. Let's see. 
re-enable our sketch, select the two parts that we wanted. Okay. Tell it to go up to, to the object itself. Okay. Don't want it to cut, we want it to join. And we now have a couple of buttons added. Now, the last case for this okay, is kind of on the flip side, where we need to kind of add some switches. So here's where we're going to go ahead and change our home position to, oops, if I do it right, right click, set current view. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and added a new plane okay, that's going to be going through to, to, to plane through two edges okay keep in mind edges are basically your straight lines so I'm going to switch to my top view and create it going through those two level planes so even though I don't have any flat surfaces I'm able to go ahead and create a plane that goes ahead and does the same thing. Okay, so you'll notice that lets me reach out, go ahead and kind of angle it in place. Okay. I think that's actually a really good one to go ahead and use to project some more of our geometry. Okay. Uh, so we can say that it's basically going to be an extension of that line. And the switch is, let's see, let's say the switch is one inch long. Okay. Our, sem or our uh, geometric constraints have that as collinear. Okay. We can finish that sketch. Actually, let's not finish that sketch. Let's go ahead and add in the top rising portion. that sketch go back to our home and it's kind of the same things that we've usually done okay we can go ahead and say that those are going to be those are going to be extruded offset okay. down a little ways um, so offset that by 0.1 too much 0 0.05 distance will be to go ahead and to object okay. join reappear that sketch same concept go ahead and have that just go down to object so we can turn off some of the sketches, we can turn off some of the planes that we've created, and we're starting to get closer and closer to that final product. So at this point, we will have a couple of uh, revolve commands left to do, but as you can see, we're starting to get closer and closer to that fully detailed uh, lightsaber.